Next speaker is Professor Senno Senyon Beck from Kia, who is going to tell us about local dark matter models. So please. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. And thank the organizer for uh, inviting me to this nice workshop. Uh, <coughs> Uh, this talk is based on these uh, these papers, uh, which were done uh, in collaboration with uh, Professor Hyungwon Ko and Vanil Park. <coughs> the simplest dark matter model uh, is based on G two symmetry, under which dark matter S has odd parity. Uh, which prevents uh, the dark matter uh, from decaying. However, this uh, ad hoc uh, global symmetry uh, is broken by quantum gravity, and so we expect uh, Planck mass suppressed uh, G2 breaking operators uh, are generated at Planck scale. Uh, these higher dimensional operators uh, will induce rap rapid dark matter decay, so this uh, dark matter cannot be dark matter candidate. <coughs> so to avoid these problems, uh, we introduce the local gauge symmetry to stabilize dark matter. So in this talk, I will uh, introduce three dark matter models uh, which are based on local gauge symmetry. In the first model, dark matter, uh, the Lagrangian has U1 dark symmetry, and this dark symmetry is broken down to G2 symmetry, uh, which is stabilized dark matter. In the second model, uh, we introduce SU2 dark symmetry, uh, which is broken down to U1 uh, local symmetry, and this model has uh, multi-component dark matter. Uh, one is uh, vector dark matter, and the other is uh, monopole dark matter. In the third model, <coughs> sorry, the <coughs> uh, so Lagrangian has U1 B minus L symmetry, uh, which is again broken down to uh, discrete symmetry. And this model can explain 3.5 X-ray line channel. And this is an extension of uh, GBAB model for neutrino mesh. Yeah. First model. <coughs> this model has U1 dark symmetry, which is uh, local symmetry. And the particle contents has uh, dark matter X and uh, dark scalar phi, uh, which breaks uh, this U1 gauge symmetry. Uh, this is the Lagrangian. <coughs> and this phi, uh, after this phi gets vacuum expectation value, uh, this term uh, U1 symmetry is broken down to G2 symmetry due to this uh, term. And this term also uh, gives mass splitting of dark matter X. So we assume the imaginary part of X uh, is the lightest uh, G2 order particle. So this is dark matter candidate. Then uh, we have dark gauge field, uh, or we can call it a dark photon, and uh, dark scalar, and uh, right-handed, uh, sorry, real part of X. So these additional uh, fields give distinct, distinctive signatures from the global case, and this model has rich phenomenology. For example, since we have additional annihilation channels, uh, we 
have more parameter space uh, for valid abundance. And in this model, uh, we may explain uh, ion GML2 uh, if the dark photon uh, is uh, very uh, light and uh, the mixing angle is uh, around 10 to the minus <coughs> 3. Minus three. So, diagram for ion GML2 uh, looks like this. However, the GMS2, uh, muon GMS2 explanation is almost uh, closed by uh, exper experiments. Our model can also uh, explain uh, integral 511 kb uh, signal because uh, our dark matter can be uh, upscattered to heavier XR, which uh, is followed by the decaying of XR to the ground state XI, uh, emitting electron and particle pairs, which gives uh, 511 uh, 5 kV uh, photon lines. And as was also explained by Professor Ko yesterday, uh, this model can uh, explain uh, GB scale gamma ray excess from the galactic center, the decay of this uh, um, dark photon to a big bar or tau, tau bar. So this model has uh, this uh, renormalizable scalar interaction. This uh, mediates uh, the hidden sector and uh, the uh, standard model sector. And this was also ex uh, uh, explained by Professor Ko in detail, so I will not uh, go into the details. And this uh, um, mixing allevi alleviates uh, a stringent direct free detection sounds. Uh, uh, via uh, GIM-like uh, mechanism, and this uh, dark scala improves the vacuum stability, and LHC can search for dark scala uh, by measuring uh, Higgs field, uh, Higgs uh, signal strength, or by direct search. Uh, now, uh, let me go to the second model. In this model, uh, the, the Lagrangian has SU2 uh, gauge symmetry, and we have uh, three flat scalar field which gets BEV in the third component, and this BEV breaks uh, SU2 to uh, local U1 symmetry, and this uh, remaining Local symmetry stabilizes the dark matter. In this case, the dark matter is uh, the heavy uh, vector boson which gets mass after this uh, symmetry breaking. So in addition to this vector dark matter, uh, this model also have a uh, monopole solution. This Lagrangian is uh, exactly the two-polyapop two monopole uh, Lagrangian, but in the dark sector, not the standard model sector. So our model has, has a massless dark photon and tab scale uh, vector dark, dark matter and very heavy PV scale uh, monopole dark matter. Monopole dark matter uh, is uh, stable uh, due to uh, non-trivial topology. Since uh, the relative abundance of monopole uh, is not the usual uh, freeze-out mechanism, uh, let me briefly explain uh, the
the mechanism to uh, estimate the relic abundance of monopole dark matter. The first one is Kibble mechanism. We assume the phase transition is second order. Then near the critical temperature, the correlation length diverges. So it becomes infinity, and we expect one monopole in the entire universe. However, in practice, due to causality, uh, we expect a different horizon, horizon volume uh, will have a different BEV. So they are not correlated uh, each other. So we expect uh, at least one monopole for horizon volume. So the correlation length is given by this uh, Hubble constant, uh, inverse of Hubble constant. <coughs> so this gives the uh, lower bound on the number density of a monopole, which is given by this. <coughs> Value. <coughs> oh, sorry. For critical temperature uh, about uh, gas scale, and if you assume the um, monopole mass is uh, about the TV scale, then we obtain too large value for the uh, monopole abundance. But uh, if we assume the uh, Critical density is electric scale, the abundance is too small. Uh, so it cannot be the uh, dominant dark matter candidate. And Jurek uh, uh, went further to develop a, a Kibble mechanism, and he estimated the correlation length by considering time scales involved during the phase uh, phase transition and uh, during phase transition the correlation and correlation length and relaxation, relax, relaxation time diverges uh, near the critical uh, temperature uh, where new and new are uh, uh, critical exponents uh, and Jurek assumed that uh, cooling while quenching occurs at constant rate near the uh, critical temperature where TQ is quenching rate. In our case, this quenching rate will be determined by the expansion rate of the universe. Then, uh, we can define T star uh, by this uh, relation, T star is uh, the relax relaxation time. Uh, T star is uh, the time when the relaxation relaxation time at T star is equal to the time difference between uh, T star and uh, critical time. Beyond this uh, time, the system uh, relax uh, there is uh, the relaxation time is too short, so the system cannot. Uh, adjust uh, fast enough to follow the changing the temperature of the bus. So uh, this is kind of the maximum uh, correlation length that can be achieved. So we assume the size of monopole is given by the correlation length at this time. Then we can easily calculate, uh, uh, estimate uh, correlation length at T star, which is, is given by uh, this relation, where C0 is the correlation length at, the, at, uh, at thermal equilibrium, and the T0 is uh, the corresponding uh, relaxation, relaxation time at the thermal equilibrium. Classically, we have mu is equal to mu is equal to one half, and uh, as I told you, TQ is determined by the expansion rate, and C0 uh, and tau0 is given by this uh, value, where lambda is uh, the quotient coupling in the effective uh, potential. 
then uh, we can estimate uh, the correlation length uh, which is given by this relation. As you can see here, we have this additional uh, suppression factor compared to the uh, table mechanism. So the correlation length uh, becomes much shorter uh, than the horizon, uh, horizon size by this factor. And uh, we expect much more uh, monopole relic. Uh, and, with, uh, and the number density is given by this relation. And with quantum corrections, uh, do and do is close to two uh, thirds. Then uh, the number density is uh, given by this formula. Murayama and Shu showed that uh, uh, monopole dark matter in the hidden sector uh, with mass 100 PV is possible. Uh, the only monopole can explain the current dark matter uh, abundance. However, uh, sorry, in sorry, so if the monopole dark matter right now is determined by that one, uh, it is determined. Uh, by mass, uh, by, by mass and uh, this number density. P C over. Yeah, P C. Yeah. yeah, this is number density, and if we assume the mass is P V scale, uh, we can account for the value of number density. So, so the P C should be very high. P C. Uh, it, it, we uh, in this case uh, uh, it's a, a P V scale. P C is. Yes. <coughs> However, uh, in our case, uh, the case coupling uh, is suppressed because uh, uh, in our case, U1 is exact and uh, the gauge boson is uh, massless and immediate long range post between dark matter and it gives uh, a strong self-interacting uh, elastic scattering cross-section. Uh, so uh, we should have very uh, small uh, gauge coupling in our case. And uh, the relic density of uh, vector dark matter can be achieved only uh, near resonance uh, of uh, the second scalar due to the uh, small mixing. So as a result, uh, the line which gives uh, uh, monopole density is equal to the vector dark matter density uh, is excluded uh, by excluded because this uh, gray vision gives uh, two uh, great uh, region, overclosed, overclosed the universe by uh, the, uh, the vector dark matter. So in our scenario, uh, the monopole dark matter is subdominant component, and the vector dark matter accounts for the, uh, the relic density in our current universe. Um, now, let me go to the third model, <coughs> uh, which was already uh, mentioned by the uh, pre previous uh, speaker. Uh, these two groups reported anomalous uh, 3.5 kV X ray line uh, with, st with statistical significance. Uh, greater than three sigma at uh, three point five kV. Uh, from observation of uh, Andromeda galaxy and Perseus galaxy cluster, uh, these objects are uh, dark matter dominated objects, and the signal uh, also has a clear tendency to become stronger towards the center of the object. So uh, uh, 
dark matter interpretation, interpretation is a viable uh, scenario. However, there are some debates on the signal because uh, similar analysis uh, did not see the signal and also the self-x-ray search did not, uh, did not see the signal in the Perseus cluster and also uh, we can expect uh, similar signal in our, in our Milky Way. XMM Newton data is consistent with the signal. However, Chandra X-ray observation uh, rules out the signal at the 95% confidence level. So it's not clear. Uh, <coughs> and also, uh, they did not see any signal uh, from the dark galaxies. However, uh, this can be uh, avoid. Uh, this can be explained by assuming some um, specific model. For example, exciting dark matter uh, can explain non-observational uh, signal in the dark galaxies. The conventional scenario to explain the 3.5 KED uh, X-ray line is decaying of a stellar, stellar neutrino with mass 7 KED through mixing with the active neutrino. Then active neutrino decays to photon and another neutrino through this uh, W boson and lepton uh, uh, one loop diagram. Then the signal can be explained if the mixing angle is around 10 to the minus 5th and if uh, the flux can be explained <coughs> if uh, the lifetime of the stellar neutrino is about 10 to the 28 seconds. Uh, we can generalize the previous stellar neutrino scenario uh, by assuming that we have unstable uh, excited state, but this uh, the lifetime of this excited state is much larger than the age of the universe. So this state is also uh, a dark matter candidate. Then. This excited state can decay into the ground state and uh, emitting a photon. This is the diagram. So if we have two dark matter components and if chi2 decays into photon through this charge loop diagrams, uh, then, uh, and if the mass difference is 3.5 kV, uh, we can explain the X-ray signal. Then the decay can be described by this transition dipole moment operator, uh, which is dimension 5 operator. So we have 1 over lambda, where lambda uh, should be around 10 to the 15 jeb. And mass difference should be uh, 3.5 kV. And then uh, this red region can explain the X-ray signal. We considered uh, an extension of a GVAB model for neutrino masses. <coughs> GVAB model uh, has two charged scalars, H plus and K double plus. This color has scalars uh, have lepton number minus two. And these are all uh, all the particles behind the standard model. And with this uh, with the introduction of these two particles, uh, we can write these two uh, Yukawa interactions where Psi R, uh, Psi C R, the lepton double S, and L R is right-handed uh, lepton singlet. 
and uh, we also need uh, soft leptom number breaking term uh, to get the Majorana, Majorana mass term for neutrinos. Uh, this is a GBAB diagram. And the resulting uh, neutrino masses are proportional to the lepton number breaking soft term mu. Since uh, neutrino masses are okay, uh, masses are suppressed by a uh, two loop diagram, uh, the particles in the inside the loop can be light, which can be uh, tested as LHC. And we extended uh, this model to incorporate uh, dark matter. We introduced uh, local muon b cell symmetry, and uh, we produced phi, which breaks uh, this uh, symmetry. And we also introduced uh, singlet kerala. Uh, and we have right-handed neutrino to cancel uh, the muon b cell anomaly. And these precise eyes are uh, our dark matter candidates. Uh, we introduced uh, flavor. Uh, we introduced uh, three flavors, and uh, the Pimana cell charges are flavor dependent. Uh, let me br briefly introduce uh, the major role played by this, these new particles. Uh, Precise are uh, our dark matter candidates, and uh, this generates uh, transition. Uh, my uh, magnetic dipole operator and uh, phi is uh, UMB cell breaking scala, uh, eta is light scala, uh, which gives the correct relic density of psi i, and also uh, light eta solves uh, small scale problems of cold dark matter uh, simulation, such as core versus cusp problem or too big to fail problem, and NR cancels uh, the case anomaly. And we also forbid, uh, forbid these uh, uh, Yukawa interactions by introducing uh, G2 symmetry, because this interaction gives uh, the usual CISO mechanism for neutrino masses. Uh, since I still want to uh, explain neutrino, neutrino masses uh, by the GBAB mechanism, I forbid uh, these terms uh, introducing this uh, global G2 symmetry. Uh, one of the advantages of uh, uh, this scenario is uh, we generate uh, the soft lepton number uh, breaking term dyna dynamically. And we have uh, this uh, Yukawa interaction, which gives uh, uh, flavor changing G prime and phi interaction after diagonalization. Then uh, the our UMB cell symmetry is broken down to a uh, discrete symmetry. <coughs> and we need a uh, Psi dark matter, uh, in addition to the right-handed neutrinos, because they cannot uh, generate uh, the transition magnetic uh, dipole moment operator, and we cannot explain the 3.5 kV. So in our model, uh, the transition magnetic dipole operator uh, is generated uh, by this two-loop Bajji diagram. And this uh, is because uh, this uh, is because the our dark matter does not uh, couple to charged particles directly, so we need two loop. And uh, one of lambda is proportional to this delta square, where delta m three one is the mass difference between psi three and psi one. So to explain the uh, X-ray line, uh, we need uh, 10 to the 15 jeb lambda. In our case, uh, this uh, large scale
bill is generated not by introduction of heavy particle, uh, but by uh, loop suppression. We take some benchmark mark points uh, where we take the GBAB scholars to be 1 TV and we take light uh, single S color and we impose the constraint. Okay, uh, this is uh, our result and this uh, red region can explain the X ray line channel and uh, this line can explain the relic abundance of dark matter uh, through eta exchange diagram which is shown here. And uh, let me skip this page. And uh, since eta is li uh, very light, uh, the dark matter elastic scattering can be strong, and this can solve uh, the so called coabosus uh, uh, cusp problem and to big to fail problem of cold dark matter uh, in this uh, region. Okay, uh, this is conclusion. Uh, we considered three uh, dark matter models with local AG symmetry and it has, uh, they have uh, rich phenomenology uh, such as uh, they can explain ion G-2 and GB gamma ray from the galactic center, X-ray line, Monopole dark matter can be a candidate and they can be searched at uh, LHC. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for your nice presentation. Uh, we are behind schedule, but we, I think we can allow one or two quick questions. Yeah, basically, it's, uh, uh, I don't know the details, but uh, they say that uh, the global charge can be eaten by black hole or white hole. But uh, gauge uh, for gauge symmetry, we have gauge field. So, uh, we, uh, so we have uh, some... Uh, some proof whether the charge has been eaten one. So any other question? What is the generic prediction to have a long term dark matter? Generic prediction? No no generic condition. Generic condition? Uh, yeah, of course it should be the uh, it should uh, live in the dark sector, and uh, the number density is uh, already fixed by this critical temperature. So if we have a critical temperature about the electric scale, and uh, if we have uh, the monopole mass around uh, uh, PV scale, then we can account for the. I mean, how to make the monopole dark matter stable? Did you should uh, uh, give some um, requirement about the model, for example, the gauge symmetry and the three particles? Ah, okay, so the stability of monopole dark matter is uh, uh, come from the non-trivial topology, I mean, uh, if we have a uh, uh, non-trivial mapping from the spatial infinity to the manifold of vacuum, then uh, we can have a stable monopole. Is it uh, your question? <laughs> I'm sorry, we are behind schedule, so I'm afraid we should stop here. So that's it.